Ellen McCauley. I'm at Pray It Off on Holy Thursday, and it's been a wonderful Lent. Uh, I love Lent so much. I've learned so much, and God has put some lessons in my life. And I want to talk about Holy Thursday. I want to talk about the body and blood of Christ. And I want to direct everyone's eyes to the back of the food log this week. And there's a very powerful article on the back of the food log. And the title is, It is not wine, it's his blood. It is not bread, it is his body. Now, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure the Catholic Church is one of the few Catholic Church, one of the few Christian denominations that believe that it's truly the body and blood of Christ. I believe most other uh, Christians believe it is a symbol. And the thing is, it never was a symbol. Jesus did not mean it as a symbol. It is the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and it continues to this day. And you might say, well, how is that? How, how does that work? Jesus and God are spirit. We have the spirit within us. Our bodies are vessels of that spirit. And we believe during the consecration that the spirit of Jesus goes into that bread, goes into that wine, and makes it the body and blood of Christ. And that all boils down to one word, and that is faith. That is faith. Because how can we really wrap your head around that mystery, but in the Bible, repeatedly, Jesus says, he says it four different times. And a lot of times people think that the Catholic Mass celebrates, if you will, the crucifixion of Jesus. It does not. The Catholic Mass is us participating in a commemoration of the Last Supper. And the priest stands in for Jesus. God uses the priest to consecrate. And we believe that Christ is there with us. We are around his table. And he offers us communion to be one with him. And that is why it is so powerful. That is why we treat the body and blood of Christ with reverence. That is why we uh, sit and cross ourselves and say amen because we believe it. That's what that amen is. I believe. I believe. So tonight is the anniversary of the Last Supper. And it's a continuation of that Last Supper with Jesus where for 2,000 years he has given us that gift that when we come together and and and. Jesus' whole life was around bread and wine. Bethlehem means house of bread. At the wedding of Cana, his first miracle was turning water into wine. He also multiplied the loaves. All of those miracles prefigured the superabundance of the unique bread that was to be his Eucharist. And I love this Bible verse, John 6, 27, because it fits so perfectly in with a weight loss group. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for on him has God the Father set his seal. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If one eats of the bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus said that. He says, he who comes to me shall not hunger or thirst. So often we think our biggest cross in life is that we can't eat whatever we want to eat when we want to eat it. If we really step back and we say, what is my purpose on this earth? What am I here for? Is it to love and serve God? Is it to love other people? Is it to get to heaven? We can't take our houses with us. We can't take our 401k. We can't take our bins of artwork that our kids did all through their lives. We can't take any of those things with us. But we can take all the love that we've shared and given and received. And you know, Passover 
aligns perfectly with the Last Supper because that's what they were doing. They were doing the Passover meal. And that is why people are like, isn't it a coincidence that Passover is the same time? No, it is not a coincidence. Jesus was a perfect Jew, and he came to be the new covenant. And I just want to bring up the real meaning. And those of you who said, I know all this, it's a good reminder. It's a good reminder to us, the meaning of life. Passover was commemorated by a meal, a sharing of unleavened bread, lamb and wine. And Jesus came to give himself as the ultimate bread and lamb, a meal to be consumed by all who wish to escape from the angel of death. We know our Old Testament. They sacrificed the lamb and put the blood on their door, and the angel of death passed by. And what Jesus is saying is, you partake of my body and blood, and death will pass by you. Maybe it will, or these bodies will die, but our spirit never will. I've also included here some Easter prayers and meditations, and I'm not going to go over them tonight, but I am going to say that some of them are, are, are just very powerful. You know, Easter doesn't end on Sunday. Uh, our, our faith in God isn't like... Now, there will be quite a few Easter bunnies who will show up and we'll never see them again. You know, and we're like, what? who are you? Oh, I go here. I never saw you before. We're not Easter bunnies. We go to Mass. We, we, we participate. And we can pray for the Easter bunnies because I'm glad they come once a year. I'm glad they come twice a year. I'm glad about that. But we want people to participate in the communion with God. We are there to renew our baptismal promises. Does anyone remember saying their baptismal promises back in the day? No. We don't remember our baptismal promises. We might, I mean, I was in fifth grade at confirmation. Remember when you used to be yeah. in fifth grade? And now they're saying, well, maybe the kids should be a little older. But that didn't start till when? The 80s, maybe? Yeah. So... I think it's great. And what are we supposed to say when we renew our baptismal promises? I do. I do. And how are we supposed to say it? We're supposed to go, I do. <laughs> Anyone who sits next to me in church, Bob, knows. Because I go, I do! <laughs> and I want my prayer offers to join me this Easter. When you renew your baptismal promises, I want the people around you to go, wow, they really do. Because we need to be witnesses for what we believe in. So there's great prayers, and I really recommend you to say the prayer to the risen Savior. Because so many people think we concentrate on the Last Supper or the crucifixion. And as important as the Last Supper and the crucifixion are, they would have no meaning unless Easter Sunday, Jesus conquers death and rises from the dead. So... All of this is a celebration, a celebration. So that is why it's so important to know the real meaning of Easter, the real meaning. Not eggs, not candy, not the Easter bunny, the body and blood of Christ. I'm going to stop right there, Bobby.